you own a sailboat and dream of leaving the hectic pace of the corporate world behind. Unfortunately, your partner may not be entirely supportive of this idea. Don't worry, you don't have to leave your partner or give up on your dream. In this video, we'll share top five tips as to how to get your partner to embrace the cruising life. I've been living on a 36 foot sailboat full time for the past year. Before I met Dave, I had never been on a sailboat before. In fact, I hadn't been on the water much at all. How did this transformation happen? Well, it was a two part process. First, he got me to fall in love with sailing, then he got me to embrace the cruising life. In this video, we'll show our top five tips as to how Dave got me to embrace the cruising life. <laughs> Rule number one, be patient. When Dave and I met eight years ago, we shared a love of the water and adventure. I had never been on a sailboat before, but I did enjoy the water, specifically stand-up paddle boarding and snorkeling, two things that I had recently discovered in my 40s after my divorce. Therefore, I was still pretty new to the water. When I met Dave, I knew we owned a sailboat. But this is where being patient is critical. He didn't overwhelm me with his dreams of selling everything he owns and sailing away. Over time, I learned how important sailing was to him. As we got more involved, he did tell me about his plans to cruise for months, maybe even years at a time. And I thought, Okay, we can have a relationship, but I can never do such a thing. I told him, you can go to the islands every winter. Maybe I can join you for a few weeks, and then the other part of the year we'll live a normal life. Be patient. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, Maui. <laughs> I had never considered this type of lifestyle before. It was hard for me to comprehend that normal people did this. I thought only rich, retired, or poor people lived full-time on a sailboat. The concept was entirely foreign to me. Over time, I did discover the lifestyle through YouTube, and Dave was patient. Don't pressure your partner into doing anything they don't want to do. It's an automatic recipe for failure. Instead, encourage your partner to learn everything they can about boating, safety, equipment, and life on a boat. But don't overwhelm them. Let them set the pace and then take them out sailing. Rule number two, create a positive experience. Right, Maui? Dave got an E minus when it came to positive experience. He wanted to make sure I had a good, enjoyable first sail. So what did he do? Number one, check the weather. There's nothing worse going sailing in less than ideal conditions. Check the sea state. Make sure uh, the waves aren't going to be too choppy or too rough. Don't want anybody seasick on the first adventure. Calm seas make for a pleasurable first sail. If conditions aren't ideal, consider sailing or motoring in a location that will be pleasurable. Better to motor down a river than to sail in 20 knot winds. You might think it's enjoyable, but she won't. Remember rule number one, be patient. Another thing I'm glad I did was renting a slip in a marina. Yeah, where Dave kept his boat before, it had really short finger piers. And I'll tell you, if a woman can't get on and off the boat comfortably, it starts things off on the bad foot. If you can't get the boat to a nice slip, consider taking the lifelines down and or having a step stool to make it easier. I'll tell you, if I hadn't been able to get onto the boat easily, it might have really started things off on the wrong foot. I might not have been as relaxed as I was to start the sail. Make sure you have a working head. This is one thing that Dave didn't get right. A woman might not need to use the head, but she likes to know that one is available if she does need to. Timing doesn't work. Get a bucket, get a porta potty, do something. Don't tell her, ah, you can just go overboard. It's really not. <laughs> a woman likes to know that it's there. She might wind up going overboard and not having to go or not needing it. But again, it's just one of those womanly things. A woman likes to know it's there if she needs it. Bring some food and water. Save the beer for when you get back to the boat. Alcohol in the sun can make for a bad experience. 
crackers, fruit, sandwiches. They're all good options. She might even offer to bring them. It was something that I felt that I could contribute to our date. Cheese and grapes, you know, light food, light snacks. Rule number three, make it fun. Bring the boat to a nice spot so you can go snorkeling or a spot that you can anchor at and that has nice views. Don't work so hard selling the boat that you don't get a chance to enjoy yourself. You wanna be able to spend some nice relaxing time together. That's what it's all about, isn't it? Encourage her to participate. Maybe let her take the helm. No? <laughs> what was that for? <laughs> Encourage her to participate. Let her take the helm. Encourage her to take a selfie. Tell her don't worry, she won't sink the boat. Some woman might just want you to do everything and that's fine. Let her set the pace. But if she wants to try something, let her. It'll give her a chance to feel, wow, I might be able to do this after all. And then there's of course the feeling that you get when you're behind the helm and the wind catches. <sighs> That's when you really got her hooked. Tip number four, don't get stressed. If things do go wrong, try not to show your stress. Yeah, when we came back from our very first sail, we were coming into a tight little marina and I had not timed the tides correctly and the tide was actually behind us pushing us into the docks and um, unbeknownst to Lori we were having some difficulties <laughs> getting the boat to go straight and uh, not go in sideways. And I thought that was normal. <laughs> I had no idea. In the end I wound up taking out um, one of the power stanchions and, uh, but we did get the <laughs> boat docked safely and the lines on. <laughs> I had no idea that anything was wrong. We went in bow first, I'm sitting in the cockpit and I'm like, wow, this is so nice and relaxing. I'm so happy, this was really, really nice. I had no clue whatsoever. He stayed calm, he stayed cool. I was oblivious. Good, good. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Stay cool, mm -hmm. don't get stressed. Because if she sees you stressed out, she's going to say, who wants to have this kind of life? I don't want to be around this. No, this is not what I thought Sally was. But Dave showed me exactly what he wanted me to see about Sally, that it was fun, that it was relaxing, that it was enjoyable, and it was stress-free. Well, at least for me it was. <laughs> <laughs> and it can be stressful. And anytime things can get stressful but one thing and this is not just five tips is something happened okay let it be and move on but that we'll talk about in another video about how to handle stress when you're sailing together and living on the sailboat full time another way not to get stressed out is to charter a boat hire a captain or go out with some friends then you have nothing to worry about and you can just spoil her and show her how much fun sailing can be. You have no responsibilities and you can just relax and enjoy. Rule number five, keep it simple. Don't try and do too much. Plan a short sail and have fun. If she enjoys her first time out, she'll want to go out again. And you can go far the next time. <laughs> Don't try and go out on an overnight sail or to your annual regatta the first time out. Build up slowly. Remember rule number one, be patient. In summary, you can't have the dream and the girl. Just remember, be patient, create a positive environment, make it fun, don't get stressed, and keep it simple. We hope you enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, please hit the like and subscribe button and have your partner watch your videos to learn what the life is like.